Hello everyone. Uh, so, we started in the last uh, lecture about uh, MITRE, ATT and CK and we discussed about uh, what it is and uh, where we are going with this uh, module 3. So, and then we talked about uh, why defenders need to know attackers uh, TTPs or uh, tactics, techniques and procedures. And uh, uh, I explained that uh, uh, ATT and CK is actually a knowledge base uh, framework uh, using which you can uh, wrap your head around uh, what the attackers do uh, normally, especially the APT attackers. And uh, we said that unlike CKC, which is a linear sequence of activities that the attackers usually uh, do, here we are actually uh, not giving a sequence. We are saying that there are these are the tactics or sub goals that they try to achieve in order for achieving the final goal and we gave examples of how Stuxnet can be looked at as uh, a set of uh, tactics that were applied against the uh, uh, Iranian nuclear uh, enrichment plant and uh, so and each tactic is actually implemented using techniques. Now the first thing that I want to uh, talk about in this lecture is uh, something that you should remember if you are in cybersecurity space uh, as a career option, uh, this is called the pyramid of pain. So, the pyramid of pain is a is a basically uh, a way of looking at what kind of threat intelligence that is intelligence about the adversary uh, that helps defenders, right? So, for example, uh, so uh, many times we say that uh, this I want to detect. Um, a, whether a particular adversary is attacking me by looking at whether the malware they normally use uh, is uh, being uh, used in my system or if there is any sign of that malware in my system. And uh, the way to recognize a malware which has been seen before is to actually uh, take the hash value, a hash function uh, is applied on the entire binary of the malware that has been found in another system, uh, another attack system, uh, uh, people actually make that as a uh, kind of a, a uh, indicator of compromise. That is, if you find a binary with the same hash value, then it is uh, the that same malware that is uh, in my system. However, it is not very difficult for an attacker when when he when he realizes that the uh, the targets are aware of the hash value of the malware they are using they can easily uh, change some uh, values inside the uh, uh, inside their source code and then recompile it and the hash value will be different. So, if you have stored the hash value as a defender to actually uh, uh, waiting for that particular hash value to appear uh, in any in any new uh, uh, file that you downloaded, uh, it do not work because uh, so, so what, what this trivial means in the bottom of this pyramid is that uh, it is trivial for attackers or adversaries to actually change the hash value and therefore, depending on hash value to uh, detect a particular adversary is not a very uh, effective uh, approach. The other thing that uh, we often detect uh, uh, while analyzing an attack or while uh, detecting an attack uh, um, in the wild is IP addresses. So, the IP address from which the initial uh, emails came. Uh, phishing emails came or IP address which was trying to scan my system or an IP address that is uh, being contacted by a malware inside my uh, in, uh, which has been already put into my system. Uh, I can try to blacklist those IP addresses uh, in my firewall and thereby not uh, uh, getting contacted by those IP addresses. But uh, attackers who are very clever, so they continue to move the IP addresses. So, the IP addresses from which they try to uh, scan your system or IP addresses that they use for sending uh, phishing emails or IP addresses uh, from which uh, 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 control and command communication happens, they can be easily changed. So, because you can uh, easily get new IP addresses. So, therefore, depending on, on the IP addresses to uh, detect presence of an adversary is also very unlikely to be very effective and uh, it is actually that is why easy here means that the adversary for the adversary it is very easy to change the IP addresses. 
Similar uh, uh, is domain names. So, domain names from which attacks are uh, seen uh, or uh, domain names that are used in command and control server uh, communication, those also can be easily changed. When we talked about this before that uh, there is a domain flux, there is a, the, that people use to continuously move the domain name and register a new domain name very quickly. Uh, and uh, therefore, uh, the domain names is also very simple for the attacker to change, not as easy as uh, changing IP addresses or not as easy as changing the hash value, but it is quite easy. Uh, then uh, the network and host artifacts, uh, if, if uh, sometimes we actually uh, see some artifacts related to uh, network, uh, the uh, for example, uh, MAC addresses, it could be uh, um, you know certain uh, fingerprints of uh, uh, hosts that we can actually use as a way of detecting some uh, activity of an adversary in my system. But even that can be changed by the adversary, uh, although acquiring a new host uh, or acquiring a new uh, uh, network connection, etc. It's slightly more challenging for the adversary because he, he has to then subscribe to a different uh, uh, cloud, maybe uh, a different cloud uh, service and, and things like that. So it's kind of annoying for the adversary, but it's not that difficult. Now the tools that they use for uh, you know doing the attack, um, like for example in Solar Wind, they use this. Uh, um, uh, the one particular malware uh, uh, or one particular uh, um, uh, code uh, that they uh, inserted or in case of Stuxnet or in case of uh, the uh, Stuxnet they use this Stuxnet worm that is one of the that is a tool for them uh, or the uh, uh, the uh, the use of uh, um, the uh, uh, energy uh, the black energy malware in case of Ukrainian power attack in 2015, those tools are uh, you know expensive to build and so therefore uh, if you are just uh, going by the tool, not by the hash value of the malware, but going by, by the tools uh, like what exactly the functionality uh, of the adversary's uh, uh, unwanted uh, uh, you know uh, program that, that has been inserted into your system. If you go by that to recognize the adversary, you may be more effective and for the adversary to suddenly go and develop new tools, they do but over time, not necessarily like very quickly. Uh, so it is kind of challenging for the adversary. Now if you recognize the adversary by their tactics, techniques and, and procedures that they are using, uh, then adversary for the adversary to hide that or to change that completely is lot more work, right? Because it takes them a long time to study a target in a, uh, figure, figuring out all the different sub goals that needs to actually succeed in order for the final goal uh, has uh, to succeed. Uh, if you, if you, if they use those tactics, techniques, and procedures, they are likely to use it in other similar uh, targets, uh, same tactics, technique, uh, techniques, and procedures because it takes time to actually uh, plan and uh, build that uh, capability. So for the adversary that is the toughest uh, challenge to um, uh, you know do a mutation of their TTPs very quickly. Ad adversaries do change their TTPs over time, but at, uh, at a very close proximity or in time they really uh, it is tougher for them to change and that is why this is in the top of the pyramid. So this is called the pyramid of pain. And this pain is with respect to the adversary's uh, pain, right? Not not the defender's pain. So going from bottom to top, uh, it uh, what we what we are looking at on the on the on the pyramid, we see the the various uh, artifacts or various uh, evidences that we use for uh, recognizing an adversary. And on the uh, right hand side, what we see is that uh, the uh, the gradual difficulty uh, level for the adversary to uh, change that quickly so that it, it cannot be discovered. So, so that is why TTPs are very important and, and uh, as MITRE has come up with this TTPs, uh, this whole entire framework, 
uh, now everybody uses that and uh, many tools actually will tell you like when they analyze a malware they can tell you what TTPs uh, the, this malware is trying to um, apply uh, or uh, if they uh, say analyze an attack uh, they can tell you that uh, what TTPs actually are being used in that particular attack. So, this is something uh, is a vocabulary that uh, we normally use when we talk to uh, uh, other cyber security uh, experts so that uh, we have a common language to describe what a particular adversary uh, normally uh, does. So, AT, ATT and CK metrics, this metrics is basically a way of organizing the various tactics, techniques and procedures. So, what you are seeing here is the um, 12 tactics that normally we see uh, actually uh, it is less than 12 here. So, initial access, execution, persistence, privilege escalation, so 4, defensivation, credential access, discovery, lateral movement 4, 8 and then 3, 11. So, there are 11 tactics that are, are uh, put in, in this matrix on the top. And uh, below each of the tactic is a list of techniques uh, that are uh, that are usually used to uh, 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 to apply that tactic, right? Now, what you are seeing here, for example, for under initial access, you are seeing uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten tact uh, techniques. But actually, if you if you drill down, then there are sub techniques in each of these. So the, the number of techniques may look uh, not so uh, not so many, like uh, probably eleven times uh, thirteen or so, uh, or eleven times uh, fifteen or so. But actually, there are more because uh, if you actually look at like drive by compromise, you will see there are sub techniques within each of these. So therefore. Uh, uh, whenever uh, uh, we look at an attacker and uh, how he uh, or she uh, worked on our system, we will always find that they have to get an initial access, right. So, so initial uh, access uh, uh, would be through uh, maybe a drive by compromise that is uh, when uh, you have a, 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 a an user in your system which who goes to a website and while um, in that website uh, the something gets downloaded onto his system. So, that is a drive by compromise. Uh, there may be uh, uh, various ways to actually uh, attract the user to that specific malware laden uh, website by, by for example, by uh, uh, what uh, you know uh, watering hole uh, uh, attack where uh, the you uh, the attacker sends uh, very attractive emails saying that if you go to this site then you will get some money or you will get some health related advice or uh, things like that and then uh, when they go there they get um, uh, compromised right. So, uh, then the other way to do initial access is exploiting a public facing application. You have a um, uh, for example, a web application which has a command injection vulnerability and attackers can use it. Uh, it may be it may have a um, uh, XSS uh, vulnerability that the attacker may use, or you may have a um, uh, you know uh, server uh, service running uh, at a certain port uh, where the service has certain uh, vulnerabilities that the users uh, the attackers come to know, uh, and then they can actually uh, use that. Uh, you can also do hardware addition. So uh, this hardware addition is a very interesting one because uh, recently actually it happened in UPI in one of the cooperative banks. Uh, some uh, miscreants actually uh, uh, took a um, uh, laptop and they, uh, they came to the bank and at some uh, corner uh, there are uh, ethernet ports on the, on the wall and so they connected their laptop on the ethernet port uh, uh, and, and this is an area that was not like uh, well lit. Um, and uh, usually uh, people do not uh, come to that area. So, they put that laptop they uh, uh, and the bank's uh, network was not well protected. So, uh, it was giving it was assigning a DHCP uh, IP address to that uh, uh, device any device that connects to its ethernet. So, there is no uh, authentication uh, that was required to connect to the network. 
So, now the attacker's uh, computer is now on the bank's network and then the attacker goes home and he turns on RDP or remote desktop on this machine. Attacker goes home and starts using RDP to connect to that machine and that machine being on the same network then it tries to it does various kinds of uh, finds other kinds of uh, vulnerabilities and then moves from that laptop to uh, important servers and eventually manages to siphon off uh, funds from the core banking. So, so this was uh, this was very interesting case of a hardware addition. So, similarly you know you can uh, if you are not careful about the how you protect your ethernet ports, uh, uh, your uh, uh, you know local LAN um, uh, you know through a proper authentication mechanism, you might get a hardware added to your system and then uh, that hardware can be controlled by somebody else. So, that is that's one way to get in into this. Another case was that the uh, uh, the ethernet that was connected to the uh, to the uh, door uh, um, uh, you know connected to the door uh, of a bank. Um, there was a, there was a some kind of a device that uh, was used to control access to the bank and that device was connected to the ethernet. So, some hackers actually went and used that ethernet connection uh, and connected their own device and uh, that way they could hack into the bank. So, so this kind of thing can happen. Similarly, replication through removable, removable media, this is the case of Stuxnet where the USB uh, device was removable media is USB, uh, it was used. Uh, spear phishing attachments, so you can actually know who your uh, targets are inside the organization send an uh, malware, uh, uh, send a malware uh, uh, you know filled uh, uh, file like uh, a PDF file or, or a uh, um, uh, JPEG file or whatever the word file which uh, can exploit uh, uh, you know unpatched uh, uh, Acrobat reader or unpatched uh, Windows Office etc, Microsoft Office etc. Similarly, you can send a spear phishing link. Uh, by which uh, you actually do the eventually the drive by compromise like the user goes to the to the URL, uh, it has to be the email is made uh, looking attractive and with uh, chat GPT etcetera make earlier we used to th know that this is a phishing email when we, when we used to see many different uh, you know uh, many uh, mistakes, grammatical mistakes, spelling mistakes and, and, and so on and inconsistency in the writing style and so on. But now with chat GPT etc, it is very easy for the attackers to actually craft emails that are very very believable. So, so users have to be trained very very carefully uh, into recognizing this uh, kind of things. Uh, spear phishing uh, via service, so you can actually do the uh, provide a service that the uh, attacker uses. Um, so, then the attacker um, uh, these that particular service can be compromised. Uh, supply chain compromise as we have seen in case of solar wind that uh, the, uh, the uh, solar wind company was uh, created, a, created an update of the solar wind uh, uh, the software. Uh, this update uh, server was uh, 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 the, the uh, development servers were compromised and this develop uh, the they added the adversary in this case uh, probably APT28 the Russians they added uh, additional 100 lines of code and this code was actually um, basically malicious code and then uh, the engineers uh, they did not probably had already done the code review before. So, they did not do an uh, again code review and they did not notice this additional 100 lines of code. And when that um, code was compiled into the uh, update and the update was uh, pushed to various users, the users got uh, compromised. So, this is a supply chain compromise. Various cases when you download a free software from uh, GitHub or, or various other places, uh, it has been the case that many times the various GitHub accounts which are not properly protected, uh, the code that is being, uh, uh, being uh, supplied to users actually has been contaminated with malicious code. So, that is another case of supply chain compromise. Trusted relationship, so when you actually have a relationship with a vendor or something, so you actually use the vendor as the carrier to of your malware 
uh, and because of trusted relationship people might actually uh, uh, do not uh, assume that uh, there might be a, a danger in uh, using their uh, you know software or their USB into their uh, trusted machines and that could be a problem. And then uh, sometimes you can actually do enough reconnaissance to actually uh, get the uh, uh, password etc of a user and thereby you first get into a user's account and then you start downloading um, payloads into the user's account and from there you do all the other compromises. So, so all I am uh, uh, by, by telling you all these 10 different techniques for initial access and if you go to MITRE website and, and, and open these uh, you will find lot more information a lot more lot more different procedures to actually uh, you know do the, uh, you know realize these techniques and also there are sub techniques within each of these. So, similarly execution like once you have the initial access you have somehow put the payload into one machine at least in that system in that network then you have to do execution you can do uh, various kinds of script based execution, command line executions, uh, you know all, all kinds of stuff then, uh, then you have to create a persistence. So, you can uh, write something on the on the shell uh, the uh, login shell or, or the shell uh, um, uh, login, login script or uh, shell script uh, or you can do uh, various uh, put uh, inject the sys, uh, uh, inject the malicious code into uh, well known DLLs all kinds of stuff browser extension and so on. Similarly, once you have done a persistence, but you are still running under the uh, same privilege as the user you actually used as your initial access. So, you may have to do a privilege escalation, there are multiple different techniques to do privilege escalation. Now, defense evasion, you have to hide yourself from, uh, from uh, for example, endpoint security uh, agents or from antivirus agents and so on. So, there are various techniques by which you can uh, do that uh, to evade defense. You can even change some of the um, binaries, you can turn off the uh, antivirus, uh, very common thing is to turn off the antivirus and so on. Because if you, if you get pre escalated your privilege, you can do that. Then you can also do credential access, credential access means that there are may, there may be a um, shadow file or uh, there may be a uh, database of credentials uh, which you can use and send it back to your command and control so that more uh, access can be uh, achieved into the system. You can do discovery of various things um, including uh, policies and including files and uh, databases and, and so on and so forth. Uh, then you uh, may also have to do lateral movement because your actual target like in case of this um, Stuxnet. The actual target was the uh, Windows system, Windows 7 system which actually had a uh, had a, the PLC uh, uh, loading capability and they actually exploited zero day vulnerabilities in Windows 7 as well as uh, as well as the Siemens uh, PLC program. So, so, so all that stuff can be uh, used to do uh, movement inside the network. Then you can if your uh, final uh, thing goal is to do exfiltration of uh, personally identifiable data for example, in that case you would actually uh, uh, collect uh, various uh, things and, and, uh, and this one, uh, for this and then do the exfiltration. So, exfiltration is, is next and then uh, you also have command and control and then there is one that is not shown here is the impact. So, that is where the 12th one the impact is the actually what we called the, the in the in the CKC uh, we had the last one uh, that is uh, to actually do the uh, harm to the uh, uh, target and that is what is called impact impact tactics here. So, so we will we'll see a lot of these many times over um, you know during uh, this uh, module as well as uh, uh, um, later on, but uh, you see here is that even though I describe them in a kind of a sequence, you could see that one could actually do this in different sequence. For example, as I uh, uh, as I was describing that privilege escalation and persistence can be in, in different order, right. So, similarly uh, uh, defensivation can be done in the very beginning or if, if you are go getting into a uh, you know administrative access account 
first uh, you may not uh, do credential access because you already are inside you may not want but in case of the ukraine attack if you remember there was a credential access for vpn credentials uh, for uh, which then was used to get into the uh, uh, the actual network target network so you can do credential access but you may not you may not need to do any discovery because you already have done um, uh, a lot of research on the uh, on the structure uh, of this uh, system like uh, or if you are actually uh, uh, launching your malware into a system which is not connected to the internet so you have no command and control uh, visibility into that network so discovery will also not uh, be useful because whatever you discover you cannot tell your command and control because you are you are your system the network that you are in is uh, disconnected from the internet so so all these different tactics may not be used or uh, some tactics may be used in different order or some tactics may be used twice like for example if you do credential access then you might do further weaponization and further uh, initial access uh, uh, into other parts of the system uh, um, you may do lateral movement much earlier you can you may not do collection if exfiltration is not your goal uh, command and control in in some cases command and control is not required like or or the system is not uh, internet denied that you cannot do command and control so all these different tactics are not necessarily used uh, in every attack or by every adversary and that is where the uh, way of recognizing or attributing who the attacker is uh, comes from because uh, uh, every uh, attacker has uh, uh, you know different sets of tactics techniques uh, and procedures that they use uh, sometimes they may uh, two attack two adversary groups may have very similar ones because they might have branched out from the same uh, sometimes they actually another thing is uh, the adversaries very very advanced adversaries do is that they do false flag operations so they would look like it is coming from another group but actually it is uh, the group that is already known in that case they actually have changed their ttp very fast so so even though in pyramid of pain we say that the ttps are very difficult to actually change but some very advanced attackers can actually very quickly also change ttps so in that case uh, we have to do uh, further investigation to realize uh, that such false flag operation has happened so these metrics you will see a lot more so we'll uh, uh, we'll just uh, uh, show you how you can know more about this uh, uh, techniques and so tactics are only like uh, 12 plus 2 that is not shown here which is reconnaissance and and the uh, and the weaponization so they don't call it weaponization they call it uh, um, they call it uh, you know uh, I guess uh, preparation or something uh, so so there are basically 14 tactics here right so 14 tactics is not difficult to remember the tactics names are good enough uh, uh, in mnemonics for understanding what roughly these tactics are for but each tactic has this uh, large, uh, number of techniques sub techniques and so on and actually uh, in order to uh, uh, sometimes some techniques may be used by two tactics like some tech some techniques may actually be apply to uh, uh, attack, uh, like execution as well as uh, 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 can can also apply to uh, for example persistence so so th th those are also there but what you will see in the uh, in all this is that uh, you have to drill down to the techniques and procedures to actually understand what the attacker actually does and uh, so here we are uh, what you are seeing here is basically from the uh, attack.mitre.org uh, website the, where you can go to the so these are enterprise uh, uh, enterprise um, uh, ttps uh, in this there is phishing uh, as 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 a, a category and then there are sub uh, uh, sub categories or sub techniques like spear phishing attachment spear phishing link or spear phishing via service so this uh, as i said that this is a knowledge base so you have all these uh, different uh, things you can actually figure uh, learn more about for each of the techniques if you become a defender uh, you know uh, as a career option then you probably would have to know all these techniques very well uh, in order to also recognize them as, as you see them. 
Now, MITRE also has a very uh, good like a uh, uh, nomenclature and identi identifier for each of these. So, each tactic and technique and procedure they have a number. So, so uh, in this case uh, this is uh, T1566 is a uh, is the number for uh, identifier for phishing and then sub because of sub techniques you will see 0 0.001, 0 0.002, 0 0.003 for different sub techniques. So, you see so these are all sub techniques of T1566. You can find also this information like if you spear fishing link in this case is sub technique number 2 of 1566. It will tell you like what kind of platforms it works on, uh, what kind of data sources can be uh, used to detect these. Uh, these. There is also a CAPIC ID. So, this is uh, uh, we will we'll talk about CAPIC uh, later and this shows who are the uh, contributor of uh, this particular write up and, and, and uh, nomenclature etcetera. And so, this is a version from 2020, there is also a new version, uh, but the numbers are have not changed in the new version. So, it uh, for this one at least it does not matter. Now, here is a procedure, uh, procedure is, is basically how a sub technique is actually done, right. So, it is a, it's a detailed description of uh, how the sub technique is actually done. And so, here you see that uh, this is the uh, uh, this is um, uh, part of the reconnaissance tactic right. The spear fishing could be part of um, reconnaissance tactic, it could be also part of the initial access ta tactic. Uh, and then here you see that uh, application logs or network traffic these are the places where you may be able to find uh, that spear fishing link is being sent. And uh, they in the procedure examples, so they say that okay, this is the procedure ID G0050. It has been uh, observed, this is an example, like other others might have also used it, but APT32 has used malicious links to direct users to web pages designed to harvest credential. So, you, and there is a there is a link to the actual uh, story from which this has been uh, curated. So, so the, the it will show you the procedure example. So, procedures are too many. So, they have they do not have a exhaustive list of procedures, but they have example procedures uh, that uh, and, and uh, an example uh, description of who might have which thread group might have used that procedure. So, you see that here you have all this you know tactics this is a this is a basically a tactic tactic is uh, numbered by T A uh, uh, some number. Then you have the techniques and then within techniques uh, there, are, there are sub techniques and then there are procedures. So, these are these are some of the procedures this is like a um, you do not see what is else is in the table it basically has examples of how APT 1 used this procedure or what, what uh, this G 0007 procedure is like and where. Uh, APT 28 used it, but does not mean that only APT 28 used it, it is just an example. And then you can find also uh, information about so far known APT groups. So, APT groups like I discussed about APT 28 in the past. So, it is a thread group uh, that is from the GRU and it has uh, uh, this attribution is pretty certain. So, uh, uh, they, and here are some examples where they actually have done attacks like Hillary Clinton's campaign, Democratic National Committee, uh, you know, uh, servers. Uh, also, uh, and US actually uh, attributed uh, and indicted five officers of GRU for these operations. And so, so the, the here you will find uh, in the in the same website you, when you go to the groups um, tab and then you go to a particular group, you will find all these details, you will see the group ID and you will see associated groups. Now, remember I already uh, discussed that uh, this APT nomenclature comes from the FireEye or Mandiant, uh, they actually call this, once they uh, see a lot of attacks, then they based on the similarity of the attacks, they cluster them. Then they say okay, this attack here and that, this attack there. So, looks like from the same uh, uh, adversary 
and uh, because I see a common malware or I see a common uh, uh, C2 uh, the command and control uh, infrastructure or I see the common uh, um, you know geopolitical uh, um, uh, geopolitical reason why such an attack happened or I see a common uh, time when they actually do th are most active uh, or uh, I may see that their command and control systems are um, you know located in such and such location or I have seen in another attack this same was used so they basically clustered them. When you cluster them that does not give you the attribution it only uh, uh, gives you an ability to tell that this attack here that uh, this attack there and this attack there they are all from the same adversary with very high probability right. As I said that there could be false flag operations and so on. So, you may go uh, wrong, but uh, when you get become a threat intelligence uh, expert and there are a few uh, uh, famous threat intelligence experts around the, around the world especially in the US. They are very good at actually looking at this and looking at various attacks and, and figuring out that there is from, from the same adversary. So, they clustered them. When they clustered them after the cluster becomes uh, good enough big, they actually start giving it a name. So, uh, Mandiant or FireEye has, uh, has a uh, tendency to give them, give them names with numbers. So, so say APT1, APT2, APT3, etc. Now, when another threat intelligence company they work, uh, they are also looking at multiple different attacks, maybe some other attacks that these guys did not see and clustered them. They might call it something else because they do not know in the meantime, these guys have made called it APT28. So, uh, in this case, for example, the uh, fancy bear is one of the common name for APT28 or strontium. Uh, there are some other names as well, iron twilight and so on. So, uh, so many times uh, we say we do not necessarily say that fancy bear and APT28 are this one and the only uh, one and the same, but we say that they seem to co uh, share common infrastructure, common malware or style of doing things. Uh, TTPs are very common, and so on. So, in that case, you may say. Well, uh, Fancy Bear is a PD28, more or less sure, or maybe it is slight branched out of a PD28, so we do not know. So, they call it associated groups, but when they call it associated groups, it is probably likely that they are the same or they are somehow related uh, in some, uh, some form. So, that and so you can find this kind of information like which are the other, uh, what are the other names given to similar cluster by other threat intelligence agencies. Also for uh, each of the uh, techniques there are mitigations that are described in the, this knowledge base. So, it is being a knowledge base it uh, tend to be pretty comprehensive. So, it will say ok, so you must do audit to ensure access to data and resources are limited based upon necessity and principle of least privilege uh, and so on. So, uh, restrict web based content or uh, do the right uh, uh, software configuration like email configurations, uh, but this is not your email configuration as much as the uh, the email uh, uh, email um, uh, that the attackers are using spoofing. Uh, their configuration also is important here. Uh, it also says how to detect you know if that technique is being um, applied. So, where the uh, data source would be, where you should look, at, look into to get know that this technique is being applied, what would be the con component data component and what it does it detect right. So, so this is the mitigation and detection advices are also in the same knowledge base right. Okay, so, before we go into use cases, I want to uh, uh, summarize. So, attack.mitre.org is a, is a treasure trove of information about how to recognize uh, adversary behaviors in terms of uh, a framework that is the ATT and CK framework. So, that when you uh, analyze an adversary's activity in your system very clearly, then you actually uh, can see that to achieve their final goal and you, you may not know their final goal if you have if you have already stopped it in the middle of the, uh, achieving that goal, uh, but in, in some cases uh, it has it usually achieves the goal like in case of a solar wind attack for example. So, in such cases 
what you would see is that uh, you will uh, uh, with with uh, with a uh, with the knowledge of ATTCK tactics, techniques, and procedures, you will start seeing that I can describe what they did over, let's say, ten days or ten months, whatever, into achieving that that they actually went went on by achieving sub goals and so those are the tactics then you will see if, how did they did achieve that sub goal so you look at the techniques and that way you can actually discover the ttps of of this not only that this knowledge base also gives you a very good uh, um, curation of uh, which uh, uh, adversary groups use which kind of te techniques and procedures uh, so that you can also try to not only recognize what tactics and procedures have been used, but you may also try to f uh, guess at least if not uh, you know finalize that which attack group might be doing this. And also uh, the same knowledge base also tells you what are the mitigations and detection process for each of the techniques. So that you can if you see that that technique is not being detected in your system your SOC or security operation center did not detect that some technique is being used. Uh, next time you have to look at a different data source probably uh, continuously in real time so that you can quickly and early detect that a particular technique is being used and mitigation tells you like how to even avoid it right. So, uh, one is to mitigate that is you stop it or, or uh, you can also uh, see how it can be detected um, you know from the logs and, and, and you know uh, network packet streams and all these places how I can detect that some technique is being applied. So, that is this, this knowledge base is about now uh, uh, just to quickly go through the uh, various use cases of this framework right. So, <clears throat> what you see uh, here is basically a, a script of uh, uh, or, or query in Splunk right. Splunk is a is a tool that often is used as a security incident security and incident management uh, tool. So, what what this Splunk is does is that it collects logs, it collects the network traces, it collects various uh, 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 you know information that is sent by the endpoint uh, endpoint agents or uh, network monitoring agents it may collect the firewall rules and so on firewall logs etcetera and then it tries to put them in a database. So, that you can run queries on this to do whatever you want to do like you may want to visualize the, the trend of uh, you know uh, various things like uh, how often you get a uh, get a uh, uh, spam email. Or, or, or how often how often you are getting scanned all this kind of information you can visualize, but you may also can query this database with the, the specific query language to know uh, various things right. Now, what uh, Splunk itself cannot tell you uh, what queries to make right. So, it is your idea of threat intelligence that will make you decide whether e, e, you know what query you will make. For example, here there is uh, basically uh, they are trying to detect if there is a process which is writing on the registry and whose whose parent process is uh, command uh, like command line right. So, and it is trying to then get that information that the uh, about this child and parent process right. So, this is a this is a query uh, that can give you information about whether uh, a, some process is writing onto the registry right. So, so this is uh, you may want to know um, the, it is little more complex than what I just described, but uh, this is the uh, uh, query that will uh, that can be automatically fired. So, you can write these queries uh, and then automatically fired. Uh, so, that if every time this uh, uh, query uh, gets a hit it will show you on the on the screen or may generate alerts and so on. But the uh, the idea here is that uh, how do you know what queries to make right. So, if you understand the tactics uh, and techniques that the attackers use then in order to detect those you can formulate your queries to see uh, whether a particular uh, technique is being used and so on. So, knowing the uh, uh, tactics and, and remember the knowledge base also tells you that for a particular technique 
what are the data sources that you should look at uh, that would give you that will indicate the, that will have a, some indication that this particular technique is being used or you can actually uh, it also tells you uh, you know what is the detection uh, process. So, so using that you can create this kind of a uh, query. Uh, so, so data is uh, only as good as you make use of it right. So, so uh, if you do not know what to look for in the, the this huge amount of data that you collect uh, on real time uh, from your uh, network, from your endpoints and from various logs that are being generated, then your that data is useless right. So, to make use of the data understanding ATT and CK can actually help uh, quite a bit. You can also do what is called a comparison of two thread groups. So, this is actually we will come to that later. This is a tool called uh, ATT CK Navigator. In this tool actually you can uh, uh, say uh, you can actually uh, select the various techniques that a particular uh, case used like so you, uh, you analyze you do forensics afterwards and after an incident you then use uh, this tool to click and uh, select which techniques you saw in that particular attack. Then you say then you see another attack and this is the, 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 uh, the blue one. Uh, so, you can color the ones that you have selected. So, you colored the first one with red, you colored the second one with blue and then anything that is common for both we will see you will see the color will be a mix of the two colors. So, so blue and, and red the, uh, this become green. Now, why is it this why is why is this useful because uh, I, I told you about clustering right. So, I, I see uh, attack here, I see another attack there, another, see another attack there. I want to know if, if their TTPs match right. So, if I captured their TTPs in this tool and colored them with different colors and then put them together, uh, then I, I will see uh, like for example, this one here and this uh, red one here clearly are not the same TTPs right. I mean only one place they match right. So, therefore, it is not like the same thread group. So, so this is uh, what the use of this TTPs to know uh, whether at least TTP wise two particular attacks are similar or same. You can also do uh, gap analysis and engineering defense. So, like we discussed in case of CKC like when an attack actually happens then you want to uh, use the uh, you want to know uh, uh, you know which stages where, uh, where the attacker was able to compromise or, or use and then you see how you could have stopped those uh, stages to be successful. So, here is the same thing for every tactic uh, you, you do not want that tactic to be uh, uh, successful in your organizational network right. So, that is your goal and to do that you have to basically exhaustively look at all the techniques that is known that are known for that particular tactic and you have to check whether uh, you have adequate measures to stop all of them. Right. Now, when you do that you will see that oh uh, there are certain things for which I have no check, I, I am not doing any check, I am not doing any blacklisting or, or I am not doing any blocking or I am not doing any way to detect it. Then you have to go back and do those things, do uh, the mitigations, do the detection techniques, implement them and then re, re discuss this again therefore, and then again look at all the techniques and tactics and, and see whether uh, your uh, uh, enhanced defense actually can take care of all of them. Once you have done that you have a good uh, posture right, does not mean that you would not get attacked because this list is not necessarily all the techniques as I said that this list of techniques that they list here in the knowledge base is a growing list right. So, if you if an attacker finds the new way of doing things that may not be stoppable with by having the ability to stop all the techniques that are here. And also there are ways to actually circumvent uh, if it is the adversary is too clever. So, therefore, uh, it is not a 100 percent guarantee that if you do all this gap analysis and do the redo the defense mechanisms you will actually get uh, um, you know fully secure because there is nothing fully secure. So, but, but at least you, you are doing your due diligence and you are uh, getting better. And then adversary emulation. So, this is actually uh, you know by, by looking at this, uh, uh, this um, uh, ATTCK uh, navigator 
you can actually see, uh, point out that this is what the user did, uh, this is what the uh, how the, uh, uh, the uh, persistence happened and this is how they, uh, the, uh, uh, they got the uh, reconnaissance information. So, you can actually uh, uh, draw this on this matrix to actually uh, figure out what an adversary did and then red teamers can actually use this. So, see, uh, see the, let us say I have an organizational network, I want to know whether I am safe against APT28. So, there is some method called uh, <coughs> attack uh, breach simulation. So, in attack breach simulation, you want to know that with how, what are the th techniques and tactics the adversary uses, like in this case APT28, and then actually make those, uh, try, try to, uh, you know, red teamers basically try to break your system. Red teamers are your people, but they try to break your system uh, exactly following the path that APT28 usually does. If they are successful, then that means you are not uh, safe against APT28. If they are not successful or partially successful, then you have to see where your defense failed. That is the blue team's job. So, there is a red team, blue team, uh, you know, uh, duality here. Red team uh, is uh, decide, uh, red team is uh, asked to emulate an attack and the, uh, the blue team's job is to actually, I, if not stop, detect the attack. If they, uh, if they cannot even detect the attack while the red team is doing it, then you know that there is a problem with your uh, detection also. So, if, if, if not only you cannot prevent, you cannot even detect. So, that is something that uh, also uh, uh, this ATTCK framework allows you to, uh, you know, kind of uh, frame the attack simulation for various groups in the form of these techniques, right. So, so that gives you a good way of, uh, otherwise, you know, if you ta tell the red team, just try to break my system, right. So, they will try your various things, but it's not, it will not be very systematic. So, but if, if you ask them to actually uh, emulate a particular adversary, they will go through this attack simulation. Okay, so uh, I think I'm done for this lecture. So next time we'll go into looking at how to use this uh, TTCK matrix uh, to analyze uh, past attacks and and come up with the TTPs that were used. So, this is very important because every uh, remember we discussed that uh, that when a, an incident happens uh, either to you or to another uh, organization similar to you, then it is highly likely that same attack will happen to you as well. So, therefore, you have to analyze either the attack that happened to you or, or your um, similar organization in and figure out what TTPs were used and then use those TTPs to g do gap analysis to see whether you are ready to stop or at least detect those things. So, we will we'll go into that in the next uh, lecture.